In order to understand basic processes like perception, we have to record neural activity at single cell resolution. Not only that, but we also have to record activity of many, many neurons densely. This is because processes like sensory representations or percepts involve many thousands of neurons acting in concert. Now we wanted to capture as much of a percept in a single cortical area as possible. And to do this we did two things. First, we judiciously picked our cortical area, and specifically we used the vibrissal cortex of the mouse. In this part of the brain, input from individual whiskers arrives to tiny columnar areas that are about 300 microns in diameter. So this gave us a very defined target to use for our experiments. Now, to actually capture the activity of the neurons, we turn to two-photon microscopy. Now, two-photon microscopy has several advantages over traditional approaches. For one, it lets you sample activity densely, meaning that instead of recording a few individual neurons, you're recording from all the neurons in that particular chunk of tissue. On top of that, you know exactly where the neurons are in space. And finally, because we had animals that were very well trained, and we're doing the same behavior day after day after day, we could image a little bit here, then a little bit here, and a little bit here, and since the behavior was the same, and the sensory representation was therefore the same, we can combine all this information and get a much larger number of neurons, and therefore sample far more densely than we would otherwise be able to. Of course, to understand sensory representations, we have to relate the activity of the neurons to the movement of the whiskers. And to do this, we captured high-speed video of the whiskers as the mouse was searching for the pole. As you can see, the pole comes into reach, and the mouse moves his whisker looking for the pole. Whenever the mouse contacts the pole, you can see that the whisker bends, and this is how we classify times of touch for the whiskers. A fundamental problem in neuroscience is relating sensory inputs to the responses of neurons. And a particular concern uh, in this case is that we wanted a model that was interpretable and statistically rigorous, but could also scale efficiently to the very large volume of data that, that we were collecting in these experiments. The model we developed is a nonlinear encoding model that's diagrammed here. On one side of the model are the sensory inputs, this is the touch and the movement, and on the other side is the prediction of the neural response. And the pieces in the middle are the parameters of the components of the model, including both the static nonlinearity as well as a temporal kernel. And we optimize, do an optimization to find the parameters of the model that best predict the response. And we can then use the quality of the prediction as a function of these variables to describe whether neurons are involved in either touch representation or whisk representation. In this map, you can see all the individual neurons as dots. The blue dots represent the neurons which care about whisker touch. The green dots represent the neurons that care about the position of the whisker. And the cyan dots represent neurons sharing both representations. The gray dots are the unclassified neurons. The dotted gray line indicates the position of the spared whisker column, that is, the place where input from the one whisker that the mouse has left is arriving at. As you can see, there are far more blue dots inside of this dotted line than outside. This is logical because input from that whisker is of course arriving at that particular column. Green neurons, or whisking neurons, are far more uniformly distributed. So what does all of this mean? If we want to understand processes like perception, we need to be able to sample neuronal activity densely across many thousands of neurons in a particular brain area. Traditionally, using approaches like electrophysiology, people have sampled a smattering of neurons across a given part of the brain. But using imaging, we've been able to sample hundreds, if not thousands, of neurons in an individual piece of tissue. Here, we really push the technology to its limits, to sample tens of thousands of neurons in an individual animal. In the future, we should be able to use this approach to sample many more neurons and therefore characterize the activity of an individual brain area at great detail in terms of its relationship to the behavior of the animal.